Right, we're doing the grease bands today as well. It's a job I like to get done. These are the old grease band I'm taking off, but horrible job, as you can see. Might be easy to cut that off. Right, let's take it off. Not we've even stopped something, because right? there's stuff on it. That's the old grease band. It's done its job, look. Um, we just clean it off. It's got a bit of soil that's washed in, not in that, but that should be alright. Just wipe that off. We can go in the same place. Really, they need to be about two foot up the tree. And if you've got a stake in the tree, don't forget to do the stake as well because everything will just climb up. And we're going to use the same place, we're nice and clean. Up. We'll pop that on. Ugh. We'll just pop that on like that. Bring it round. Stick it as tight as you can. And we'll put two bits of string. They use jute string because it'll, as you saw, the can't find it now. The old string here, you are, when it's been on a bit, it's not going to uh, strangle your tree. So, a nice piece of jute string is just right. I like to do it one at the top, one at the bottom. Look. Straight round, not too tight, remember. Just do it like that. We'll just Take it off tidy, and then I also put uh, tree grease on as well. I'll just show you how to do that. Anyway, just take that off. I use an old chisel because I need to put it on quite thick. There it is. Look. Quite horrible and quite sticky. I put it round the bottom, get a good cover, because I always think that doesn't quite look tight enough to me with these bands, so you put a good it will make a barrier that they can't get past. This is the aphids and one of the mouth it wants to creep up. You get a lot of stuff wanting to get under your grease band to hide. And this will stop all that and what I do I just smudge on the knots a bit so they don't give much a little bit round the top and that's that's your grease band on there's a bit of a hollow there not so I just fill that up this will stop all the aphid coming up and the uh, codling moth, it will stop that later, in the, not this time of year, it'll, if you've got it you've already got it up. It'll stop the next lot coming up. There's the grease band on. As soon as you finish, give the whole area a good raking or hoeing. Make it all look nice and tidy, ready for the spring setting because we'll be putting some plants at the bottom here. Hello, tea break time again. Um, well, I just had a word with these, they're still not going to help, so it's too cold. And I could do with some more eggs, girls. They're not laying enough yet. But while we're on our tea break, I thought I'd just have a little discussion about potatoes. Now, we we say let's sprut the potatoes and they say oh we need to sprut them but have you ever thought why we sprut them? Well so I thought I'd go through just the basics to let you know. Now this is what we call the rose end of the potato that's where you'll get most of the eyes. Now the rule of thumb is if you just put it in the ground like that you'll get uh, one or two large potatoes, a few medium and lots and lots of small ones. Now if you take it so there's just three of these eyes left you'll get a few more bigger ones but still again lots of medium and small ones which is but if you take it to 
two you'll get a good number of big potatoes and a good number of medium but a few small if you take it just to one eye you'll get a few large potatoes and a few small ones so I normally take it to three so I get a decent amount of potatoes and not if you've got small potatoes you're just going to waste them so that's why we sprook potatoes and the other thing is remember if you sprook them you're giving them a good start in the ground so you get them a little bit earlier and better crop no so much wasted I'm going to drink my tea now hello I've just put in the new potatoes in oh, it's cold in this wind um, if you remember we talked about sprutting well there they are look, I've got three spruts there this is I've rubbed all the others off so we've got just three nice spruts coming through remember it's to save waste at the end of the season so we're putting them in a row about five inches deep for early so they don't need to be terribly deep and um, about 15 inches apart that's the rose end it's got three lovely eyes there no more you see because I've rubbed those out and we should get put it rose end up I use the trowel just to loosen the ground a bit it's not really necessary it's just one of those things you do again look there's the rose end with there is three nice eyes there now and we'll just just break the soil at the bottom but uh, don't really need fertilizer on this see that's got one there and I'll just show you this we've got one two three nice ones take that one out we don't really want that one we just there you go just rub them off and then plant it in rose end up that's what do nicely again that's it other trugs are available this one's about as old as me I think I just rake them over now I'll just do a little bit to show you use the old rake it'll be all right now I have already put two rows in each row is 15 inches apart and I keep the soil very very loose between the rows with the hoe because I will want to rake it up to cover the tops up to stop them catching the frost and the cold winds so as they grow we'll cover them up and just leave the tip showing then if there is a frost another shoot can come up if it's knocked off so we just cover them up for now look. cover that side first keep that loose and then we just push this on the old line can come out now we just put the marker in so I know where it is so when we're looking for them we'll know where to look just go along just rake it and keep it rake keep it loose until they start showing then we'll start we'll come with you again and we'll show you how to uh, how to heat them up to keep the frost off hello we're in the greenhouse now so we said we were going to put some early new potatoes in so let me just get them out I brought five up but we'll probably only use four anyway so and the old, we've made the boxes put a liner in so I, I filled it by a third with and a compost as you can see I mix some soil with it so it can it can hold its moisture and give the potatoes a nice taste we'll put um, these are uh, first earlies we're putting in and we'll put four in here they are look just first early potatoes see the nice eye look sprutting beautiful and a few roots coming out put it in that way up there's a couple more eyes still to come might get a bit more and we'll plant it that way up so pop that in same again, I've got three eyes on that one. Put that there. There we go. Very nice, ready to go. And let's go for the big one. It's got the most eyes on that. 
and put that one in. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to cover them with three or four inches of compost and leave them to grow through and once they start growing through we'll keep putting compost on, compost on, compost on until we're up here and then we'll let them finish and then we'll take it out and we'll put something else in the in the box so we get a second crop off it. Now what I'm going to do now look, is just and I've kept the compost in the green now through a day or so so it's nice and warm. So I'm not putting a lot in. Beautiful compost. There you go. And it's damp enough to start them off so I'm not going to water them today probably tomorrow or the next day just let them get settled and let them go and then we'll keep going and going till we're up and beautiful they are right while we're up at the greenhouse we'll have a look at the tomatoes we put in and the onion seed um, we had them in the house for about four days as soon as they started growing we brought them out here they've had no heat and as you can see they're doing rather well, I'm quite happy with them yet um, while we've been up here I've planted some oh, that won't do some cauliflower, cabbages and uh, lettuce in these trays, they're all labelled up but I've just popped those in put a bit on and we'll just go together and put some spring cabbage in oh, it's a nice bit of spring cabbage it uh, it won't be long at all before this is ready. I've, uh, I'm going to use this whole tray. Look. There's loads and loads in there, not want this amount. It's just very lightly sprinkled together. That'll do. Don't want no more than that. Just put a bit of this on top, look. There you go. This keeps the top nice and damp and the root a lot quicker so if you can get some. Right, we've covered them up with some vermiculite. Now when you come to water this stuff, water direct down because if you go to the side you blow all the vermiculite off. So just gently moisten it first. I'm not going to give them a lot of water just then because they only want to drop just to start these seeds off. Maybe tomorrow we'll give them a, a water with a very very fine rose on the can. So I should keep the water in the green now so it's the same temperature like we did in the house.